the devastating news just does not stop for the New York Knicks as we have another brutal injury update. As according to Ian Bagley, OG Ananobi is out game five with a hamstring strain and we have to talk about this. So what's up guys? Welcome back to Knicks Digest. It's Chris here. And man, three straight games without OG Ananobi. He's just not healthy. He hurt his hamstring in game, what, game two? And ever since then, we have not seen the man play. It seems like it's a grade one hamstring strain. And that has caused three missed games and potentially more, guys. Now, look, hamstring strains are weird. It could be very minor, and in a few days, you could be good. This happened to OG five days ago. So there's a good chance that he could be back in a few days from now. But of course, this Knicks Pacers series, there isn't that three-day break until after tomorrow's game till Friday. So definitely the fact that these games have been compacted close to each other has not helped it. And OG Ananobi will be missing another game. He missed game three, the Knicks lost. He missed game four, the Knicks got absolutely destroyed. And now he's going to miss game 5-2 against the Indiana Pacers, which means we will continue to see the starting lineup of Brunson, DiVincenzo, Josh Hart, Precious Sachua, and Isaiah Hartenstein. I just thought I saw someone in the corner of my room. That was weird. Um, But it's just, this is, ugh, dude. When you look at the New York Knicks and when you look at what this team would be when they're healthy, it is so painful to look at this starting five because it's not even bad. It's still a good starting five. Precious, as a starter for the Knicks in the regular season, averaged 11 points and 10 rebounds per game. He got a few blocks in there. He did his thing. He shot well from the field. Josh Hart has been outstanding these playoffs. Dante DiVincenzo started slow but picked it up and has been excellent, averaging 25 or 29 points per game over his last five games. Jalen Bronson, I mean, greatest Nick of my lifetime, I think. Isaiah Hartenstein is an awesome center. They even got solid bench pieces still with Deuce McBride, with Alec Burks. Jericho Sims is a fine backup center. But we are a long way from what this roster could have been healthy. And it hurts to look at. But we got to keep pushing forwards because we have a playoff series to win. But it does get harder without OG Ananobi. Now, Mike Breen spoke on this also. And he said, I don't think he's going to play tomorrow. I'd be surprised even if he played Friday. Maybe towards the weekend there's a chance. But right now, from what I've heard in the last previous couple days, he's not close. We just cannot catch an injury break. And it sucks because we are still into the thick of it with playoffs. We're not dead in the water. We're fine. It's 2-2 two to two against the Pacers right now, man. We're good. We win game five. We're good. We're going to Boston to play them in the Eastern Conference Finals. That would be massive for the New York Knicks. However, right now we're in a weird spot where we're missing half the roster, and we're still doing great. No other team could pull this off the way the Knicks have. So you just wonder, what what's going to happen? What are the changes that are going to be made, considering it's going to be the same roster as Game 3, where the Knicks, they were right there, and an absolute prayer from Andrew Nemhard goes down, along with some key missed free throws, and the, and the Knicks lost Game 3. Game four, we know what happened there. Absolute massacre. Monica McNutt said it today. Sometimes there's just going to be that one game that's a dud with all these games coming in back-to-backs. And at some point, the Knicks are just going to have a dud. They had it. She's absolutely right on that, too. It, at some point, it was going to happen. But right now, this Knicks team, we're into the middle of a playoff run. We have to work with what we've got. And in that case... What adjustments are going to be made? I think Dante DiVincenzo should stay on Tyrese Halliburton. My big thing is I don't want Josh Hart guarding Pascal Siakam as much as he has been because Pascal's a big body. He's one of the true modern power forwards of basketball. He's up there with Julius Randle and Zion Williamson, Paulo Bancaro, those type guys. 
And when you look at it, I don't think Josh Hart can handle Pascal Siakam. It's one of his worst matchups as an undersized four when he's playing that role. So at the three, he's cooling. I like Precious on Pascal. I honestly think they should play Precious like 43 minutes. Just do it. Like when you look at the Knicks, when you look at what they need, they need someone to guard Siakam. Don't let Siakam be the X factor. Make Tyrese Halliburton have to keep going for 30, almost 40 points every night in order for the Pacers to win a game. That is what we need to see. Make them do that. Make Halliburton score that rock every single time. Have Precious there to just not let Pascal Siakam do what he can do to Josh Hart. I think that's a massive adjustment. But even when we keep looking... We know how valuable OG is, and to not have him just putting Precious in jail sucks, but also his offense is great. He is tied with P.J. Washington despite the injuries for most points with fewer than 10 free throws made this postseason. OG's just that good. He just is. I mean, P.J. Washington is having an excellent postseason. He's getting so many touches, and he's playing every game. OG is missed. He's going on his third missed game of the playoffs. Oh, <sighs> well, we know one thing. We know this healthy Knicks team, when they're fully healthy, can contend for an NBA Finals. But right now, you can't think about that. You got to think about the now. You got to think about still contending for one. Go for it, guys. Don't quit. Don't give up. And these Knicks, they don't quit. They don't know how to quit. So we know that's great. We know they got it. But this series is getting intense. OG Ananobi, he has a career rating of eleven of 111.9 for the Knicks in his career, which is excellent. And since OG got to the Knicks, these are the top three defensive ratings in the NBA. The Minnesota Timberwolves have, in my opinion, the best on-ball defender in the NBA, or maybe second, literally to OG Ananobi in Jaden McDaniels, then also the best low-block defender in the NBA, or maybe second to Wembenyama at this point, in Rudy Gobert, the man who just won his fourth Defensive Player of the Year, and then Miami, who's just a great defensive team also, and has Eric Spolster, who as of today is the best coach in the NBA. So when you look at things like that, it's like, okay, I get it. Like, this is why the Knicks are so good with OG. They're an elite defense. They become an elite defense with OG on Anobi. Now they don't have OG, and in just two games, they've went from being one of the best defenses in the playoffs to having a 120 defensive rating, which is second worst. Dude, they're falling apart out here with all these injuries. And I mean, shout out to the Knicks for staying alive, keep going, and not quitting. Because I still think the Knicks are going to win this playoff series. I do. You can never doubt Jalen Brunson. He's too good to be doubted. You cannot doubt. Dante DiVincenzo with the way he's been playing. Josh Hart has shown us all why he's just that good. Precious Achua has been good as a starter. Isaiah Hartenstein's an awesome center. The bench is still all right with Deuce, Alec Burks. Alec Burks is playing phenomenal basketball. And Jericho Sims, they should give Sims a few more minutes. But things definitely have gotten a little more complicated as time has went on with these injuries. As you can see, the score from the last game was currently just up on the screen. I'm bummed out, but... I'm not losing hope in this Knicks team. If they can get back to Boston, if they can get to Boston, if they can get to the Eastern Conference Finals, I think OG can come back, and then maybe they could make that Finals run still in a year that they were not supposed to. Be that underdog story, New York. We got this. Look, Game 5 tomorrow at home, Knicks crowd. Almost beat the Pacers in Game 3. You had one dud after all these close games. That's fine. You regroup. It's just one game. Doesn't count for anything more just because the score was a little more lopsided. Keep it going, New York. We got this. Knicks in six. We're better. And by we, I do mean the Knicks. Because at this point with all these injuries, I will be suiting up for them. And I'm big enough that I guess I could play power forward for Tibbs until my knees explode. But guys, leave it in the comments. Let me know. How are we going to fare without OG for a third game in a row? What do you want to see happen with the rotation? Like this video. Subscribe to Nick's Digest. It means the world to me. We're giving you these updates right as they're coming out. So, guys, you don't want to miss anything. We got a ton of gun, uh, good stuff coming out, whether it's the draft, playoff stuff, off-season moves. You guys don't want to miss it. So, make sure you're subscribed. Have a great day, and go Knicks.